Welcome back to part two of our vSphere.net development series. In part one, we learned how to connect to our vCenter and collect various objects from its inventory. And today, we're going to build on that project and discover what actions and properties are available for our VMs. So if you haven't completed part one, please go back and do that now. Today we're going to add some functionality to our application, like the ability to view the number of CPUs and memory for a VM, as well as power it on and shut it down. To begin, we'll create a new form that we'll use to display the selected virtual machine's CPU and memory configuration. We'll call this form About VM. Now this form will be displaying three bits of information. It'll display the virtual machine's name, so we'll create a label. We'll call it LBL name. And because this is a dominant piece of information, we're going to make it slightly larger than the rest. Next, we're going to display the number of CPUs. So we'll create a label called LBL CPU. And finally, we'll display the memory. So we'll create LBL mem. And then we're going to want two buttons to interact with the virtual machine. One button to power it on. And we'll name this button BTN power on. And a second button to shut down our virtual machine. This will be called BTN Shutdown. So when your form is complete, you should have all of the following. Now let's move over to the inventory forms code. First, we need to create a new mouse event handler for when the user double clicks on the list box. Now you might notice an error that this doesn't exist in the current context, but that's okay. We'll create that down here. In a new private method for when the user double clicks on the list box. This will call the new mouse event handler that we created above. Now we need to create a new virtual machine list. We'll call it VM Objects. We'll use this list when the user double clicks on a virtual machine. This is necessary because the entity view base list does not contain a definition for name, which we'll be using to search. This will make sense in a moment. Our next step is to populate our virtual machine list, and leveraging our for each loop is the simplest way to do this. There are many ways we could pass information from one form to another, but in this case, we'll create a new public class called Shared Objects. Within this class, we'll create a public static virtual machine object that we'll call selected VM. Now we'll move on to actually returning the virtual machine object that the user selects from our list box. We'll use the find all method from the VM objects where the virtual machine name equals the selected item from our list box. We have to use the first or default method at the end. Otherwise, Visual Studio thinks we're trying to implicitly convert a list to a virtual machine object, which it won't allow. To illustrate why we had to create our virtual machine list, we'll change this line to search against the VM list, which would seem a little more intuitive. However, this type of list does not contain a definition for name, which is what we're searching for. 
and to work around this issue, we're using the virtual machine list VM objects. And finally, before moving on to our about VM form, we need to call the form and show it. Let's take a look at the about VM forms code. First, we'll need to reference the vmware.vim namespace. And now, we can start populating our labels. The name label will pull from our shared objects class selected VM dot name. Our CPU label will return some text before displaying the number of CPUs. The CPU configuration can be found under selected vm.config.hardware.numCPU and we'll need to convert this to a string. The memory is also under config.hardware and is called memory MB. Once again, we'll need to convert this to a string, and we'll add some text to the end. Let's create the method for our power on button. Once again, we'll reference the shared VM and we'll use the power on VM method. Now this method requires us to specify the VM's host. This can be found under runtime.host. Let's move on to the shutdown button. This one is much simpler. Selected VM dot shutdown guest. Let's give this application a whirl. Sure enough, we see the VM's name, CPU, and memory configuration. Let's try turning it on. It works. Let's try shutting it down. That works too. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and are ready to start creating your own vSphere.net applications. And don't forget to share them with the community. For more information, visit vmspot.com. I'm Matt Bradford. Thanks for watching.